internet is full of advice on how to prepare a resume and rehearse top interview strategies and so on. This article is not another contribution to how to land your dream job. It's about how to know what that dream job is in the first place. Being adept at landing the job isn't much of a virtue. If you are landing a job at the wrong firm, whatever aptitudes, skills and work history you have is what it is. How you choose to market it is how you choose to do so. My question is, are you choosing to market yourself to the right companies? Elsewhere I give my list of the most elite of the best companies to work for, knowing that though won't solve for you the question of the right fit. Size matters. If you are not considering size as a variable to vet potential employers, you may be making a big mistake. It can make a big difference to both the satisfaction of your work experience and your capacity to succeed at your work. Are you more suited to working at a smaller firm? It usually has a much more hands-on focus. The working relationships you'll form will likely be much closer, almost family-like, which has two sides to it. This is not only opportunity for a close familiarity with your colleagues. You could actually know everyone with whom you work. This is a distinct work environment. An additional benefit in the minds of many is the chance to see the immediate payoff for your work and effort. This is something that large, impersonal firms usually can't provide. Certainly not to the same degree and in the same manner. Though larger firms strive and often succeed in creating a team atmosphere within departments and divisions, the truth is that your team's success is ultimately always dependent upon the accomplishments of some other teams beyond your control and outside your shared group identity. At a small firm, the successes and the challenges are all much more immediate and tangible. On the other side of the coin, though for some people the large company is the place to be, it provides benefits and opportunities that are simply unavailable in smaller businesses. Larger size means more employees, which due to scope of management limitations, usually mean more managerial layers, which means many more rungs on the executive ladder to be climbed for superior compensation and benefits. Increased size also offers greater opportunities for professional specialization. At the same time, though it can provide escape from a specialization that has grown stale, lateral moves can open up new career possibilities without compromising seniority and tenure. And if you have any of the adventurer's spirit in you, nowadays it is common for very large companies to be involved in geographically dispersed business. Working at such a firm may offer the chance to travel and even to live in excitingly different cultures and societies. This can be a once in a lifetime opportunity for your children to experience the world. It is common for such firms to provide language training, schooling and other forms of family support should you make such a move for the company. And of course, let us not forget the bottom line. Usually larger companies can provide larger salaries and almost always more extensive and valuable perks and benefits. Structure matters. As important as size can be in your decision upon which employers to target, don't neglect to consider the role of structure. It can be equally as important in its effects upon your work experience. There's a spectrum here where one end has more regimented companies with exact and firm hierarchy job descriptions and chain of responsibility and reporting. At the other end are companies such as the video game producer Valve who embody fluid, adaptive working relationships. These firms are rooted in the dynamism of employee initiative and innovation. Indeed, some of them, like Valve, don't even have chain of command hierarchy. Instead they are Premised upon the entrepreneurial spirit of their associates, lateral operational adaptation, and an ethos of collegial mutual accountability. Don't be misled into passing moral judgments on those attracted to one form of structure or the other. The reason that both exist is because different people thrive better in different environments. You have to figure out which is right for you. Perhaps you thrive most when tasks are clearly prescribed. Are you stressed when blindsided by problems which you had no idea were going to be your responsibility? 
Are you anxious when given vague instructions, or encounter unclear expectations? If so, no matter about all the great perks you may have heard about at some of the flatter structured firms, it's probably not the place for you. No number of ping pong or massages tables will be adequate compensation for a work life that feels constantly distressed. That's not a recipe for either satisfaction or success. The inverse set of considerations, though, are equally true. Those who feel inhibited by authority, inspired by new challenges, and revel in the roughshod work world of endless improvisation, are not going to thrive in a budding, down firm of clearly delineated and firmly enforced processes and responsibilities. The increased security and stability that they may offer likely isn't worth the price of the organizationally conservative culture. Such people will find their satisfaction and greatest success in the more fluid, flat-structured organization where they will be provoked into creative spontaneity adaptation. These are the companies most likely to encourage and reward such people's boundary-defying style of intellectual curiosity. Again, there's no right and wrong or good and bad here. There's only what works for you. The different kinds of companies possess different qualities. Your work success and satisfaction depends upon the thoughtful and realistic alignment of those qualities with your own dispositions. Hopefully this quick review has given you food for thought that will pay off in a more rewarding work experience.